This is Bunny Bula reporting live from South Africa for the dope news called African Voices for the Road to Growth. The coronavirus has stopped us all in our paths, putting a pause on our daily day-to-day activities. One such activity is travel and tourism. The industry is at a standstill, but that does not mean innovation for survival is dead. With our show, we want to understand the journey of these trailblazing industry leaders from their past journeys to the present situation and, of course, the roadmap to tomorrow's growth. So join me on this interesting journey as we move across the various African countries to learn, explore and empower the voices of Africa as they set into survival mode to revive and reinvent to a whole new normal. Sidi Mohammed from uh, Morocco. Sidi is based in uh, from the company Atlas Voyages, which has offices in Marrakesh, Rabat, and Casablanca. Atlas Voyages is over 50 years old and has always been anticipated as a major market trender and became the leader in the tourism industry of uh, Morocco. Good morning. Welcome, Sidi Mohammed, to the Dope News. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, uh, Atlas Voyages, and the highlights of uh, being in the tourism industry in the last two years? Uh, good morning, uh, Bunny. Nice uh, to be with you this morning. Uh, well, I've been uh, working in the tourism industry over uh, 25 years. Uh, 20 years in Atlas Voyages. So Atlas Voyages, as you said, in one of uh, the biggest DMC in Morocco that have uh, well, existed in uh, more than 55 years in in the market. So we are handling uh, 100,000 clients every year, which means, of course, uh, Moroccans that travel in Morocco and abroad Morocco and foreigners that come from different countries in the world into Morocco uh, to discover the the beauty of our uh, uh, country, of course. Well, indeed, you definitely have a very, very beautiful country. Uh, Tell me, what was the footfalls like in the last year just before COVID or the last two months or so before COVID? Well, uh, let me tell you that, uh, of course, uh, being a sales manager, so I am proud of being Moroccan and of being traveling uh, all over the world. First, promoting Morocco, promoting our country, our culture, our hospitality, and of course, then the services of Atlas Voyage, that is obvious. Uh, Last year was one of the nicest year in tourism in Morocco. So we have reached nice records, something like uh, 30 million tourists uh, for the first time. And this year, 2020, was going to be uh, a year of records, let's say. So we started the year very well, with very good growth in Morocco in general, something like 10%. Uh, specifically in Atlas Voyage, we started the year very well with more than 20% growth. So we were really expecting a very nice year and season. Our, uh, let's say, agenda was full of tours and uh, and uh, tourists uh, from all over the world. But of course, then come the tragedy. And uh, of course, <laughs> after that, everything was going to be cancelled step by step. Well, I think, you know, uh, Sidi, it's been, uh, it's very interesting. This is what life is all about, is to expect the unexpected. And I think we all really were planning some big dreams for 2020. The universe definitely had other plans for us. So now let's look at the present that the world had stopped for a while. How has COVID impacted uh, Morocco during the lockdown? 
Well, uh, let's say that, uh, of course, uh, we were all uh, following all the news all over the world because, of course, it's international. So, uh, first of all, of course, it started in China. Uh, well, then, uh, of course, our national company, Royal Air Maroc, uh, stopped all the flights from China because China was closed to all over the world. And uh, in February, we all think that it's going to stay there. So we were following our, uh, let's say, uh, everyday working. So I remember I was in Milano, where there was a big exhibition in tourism. So we were there meeting all our partners who were happy about it. And it was in the middle of February. Then after that, I came back. I went to Spain to visit some clients. But then there we started to feel that something is going to happen. But just after that, at the end of uh, February, first week of March, we started to hear some bad news from Europe and especially from Italy. So we work, uh, of course, with the Italian market, but then we started to feel that it's going to be bad. And after one week, uh, while in Morocco, and the, the government of Morocco decided to stop all the flights from Italy. So when this happened, of course, we had some clients in-house in Morocco. So we have to start looking for uh, uh, alternatives to get them out of the country. So that was a little bit easy because other countries were still open. So we were going, doing that from Spain, from France, etc. But two, three days after, then they announced that they will close Spain, they will close France. And then, of course, we have to hurry to make everybody going out from the country. And of course, after two days, they closed. So when they closed, uh, we still had some thousands of clients in the country. So with the help, of course, from our government and all the embassies, so we had to handle all these people to get up out of the country. Of course, uh, that was a shock for everybody, not only of for course, me, of course. because it was something inedit that we have never felt. I mean, we have never expected, let's say, that uh, something like this could happen. I mean, that uh, we have to stay at home, no, no children going to school anymore, no nothing. So then, of course, in the beginning, they start saying, you better stay at home if you can do some, uh, as we say, teletravail, working from home. <clears throat> but then after two, three days after, then the Moroccan government decided that uh, everybody has to stay at home and that people can go out only with special permission, like it happened uh, let's say in the main countries of Europe. So Morocco uh, sincerely reacted very well. So he preferred, I mean, the health of, its, uh, I, I would say, people more than economy. So this is what they did. But of course, the impact of the economy was uh, rushed because, uh, well, everybody stopped it apart, of course, the banking uh, things and the agroalimentary, uh, I mean, and pharmacies, etc., that were still open. But everything was closed completely, and we have to, to deal with it. Now, uh, Sidi, tell me what's the status of your lockdown currently in Morocco? So, the status actually in Morocco, after more than three months, because uh, as I told you, we were from the from the beginners of doing this lockdown. <clears throat> this was then on the mid of March. We are now practically the mid of, uh, of June. And just uh, yesterday, I mean, during this week, the government decided to open the lockdown gradually. Uh, so they divided, let's say, Morocco in two parts, zone one and zone two. So zone one, people can go out. Uh, people can go out at any time. They can go back working. Uh, barber shops, uh, all the working things can shop, malls, etc. can open. 
of course, under the healthy uh, measures that have to be taken, but they can open, people can visit their families, so they can go to work. And the zone two, uh, we have still to go out under permission. And uh, of course, not everything is open yet, but this can change every week. I mean, every week they will study the status of each city, that is in zone two, that can go in zone one. And after the 9th of July, inshallah, we will be, let's say, open. Uh, but actually, we don't have any official, I mean, news about the opening sky of Morocco. Some dates are told, like mid of July, we are talking about the 16th of July, that Morocco can start accepting foreigners and international flights, but nothing is there yet. Even for the internal flight, they are talking about 2nd of July. But as I said, there is none official date yet by the government of Morocco about that. Of course, we are all keen and we are waiting for that day because, of course, uh, COVID is there. Uh, it, will not, it will not end very soon. Uh, and we have to start to live with it, let's say it in that way. True. True. Selena, in the last three months, I know it's been very challenging in Morocco. Has there been any assistance from the government uh, uh, to support the tourism stakeholders, the agencies? Has there been any financial support for coming through from the government? Well, uh, to be honest with you, uh, they didn't do anything specific to the tourism industry but they did something to all the sectors. So uh, Morocco has been helping all, I mean, people who stayed without work, who had to stay home. So they give a compensation to all the companies and to all these people who are working. So this is something wow, because this is something really that has never happened to Morocco and they really reacted very well so they give all the support in all the sectors to all people who had to stay home and stay without working so this is really was something very positive and very reactive because this is something that they decided they made happen and they give this money to people on time this is very important because i have of course clients I have friends in Spain, in Italy, in France. I know that their government will help them. They will give them, well, much more budget than us, of course, it's Europe. But I know that the help is not there yet. So the companies has to pay all their employees. They need to still receive the, the help from the government, but they didn't receive that money yet. So in that case let's say that morocco reacted very well they give all the help and of course for all the companies they made some special credits with special conditions that i mean all the companies can get as a credit for helping the their company of course to stay there and not to close and to be facing all their uh, of course uh, providers that have to pay so this is something that has been done and it is still on but of course uh, the tourism industry and of course us we have been impacted directly and of course it's one of the industries that has been impacted the first and um, it will be one of the industry that will come the last one i mean not everything will come back as soon as we are wishing because as you know uh, people they will have to come back not uh, everybody can travel now etc so this is something that will be done well progressively and uh, so we we still need the support of our government specifically for the tourism sector and this is something we are still i mean our government are still discussing to see which issues, which solutions they can 
bring us to help us going on on this bad time no city that's a, a very uh, proactive of your government because obviously they value the kind of work that the tourism industry and all other industries have done to uh, uh, develop uh, morocco's uh, economy that you uh, your government is paying you all promptly that helps with the survival in our industry but apart from that our industry we are very resilient people so we will bounce back i'm very sure of that perfectly perfectly uh, uh, okay so let's now start looking at the future what do you think in your crystal ball in the way you view things what do you think travel will be like post covid well i think that uh, post covid uh, people uh, of course uh, will continue traveling because this is something we cannot stop i mean uh, as we say life goes on but of course life goes on but will goes on differently <laughs> of course uh, as i am saying sometimes uh, nothing uh, well of course uh, alhamdulillah we travel all over countries and we all have been in asia in china and we all have seen all these asian and maybe chinese people traveling with masks and sometimes we were a kind of laughing all oh, look uh, the pollution how they are <laughs> and now has come the time that we are doing the same and we will definitely do the same when we will be traveling so uh, people will have to be more careful about their health more careful about what they are doing more careful about what they are touching about what they are but they will still go on traveling uh people in in general has been impacted for this covid so the travelers that will come back the first to travel are the ones that are economically let's say easy so not only rich people but people that have kept their work etc so people who has lose their job etc so they will not be traveling very soon and this will be an impact in let's say our immediate industry saying this i didn't say all because people they will still traveling and i think that the country that will be the first to open their country and their sky to the rest of the world will be the first of course to receive tourists and will be the first to be scheduled in different programs etc and will be the first to gain the most interest well among the other it's like if we push today a button we put reset and we start from from the beginning but of course uh, okay. countries that have been positioned there so are still there and keep on well they will you know city uh, morocco is so well known in the my sector your incentive uh, and uh, groups and all that uh, travel that ha- come through to morocco now how would you, uh, are you, do you have any plans in place to start attracting the my sector to start considering coming to morocco well the my sector uh, of course in uh, big cities like uh, marrakesh that it uh, that have uh, wonderful uh, hotels like uh, wal mansour la mamounia for seasons fairmont etc so uh, we will be of course uh, all uh, the hoteliers today are preparing all the safety and hygienic i mean process to open following of course uh, the the rules and what have been given from the moroccan government so once it will be done and the sky will be open well we will start promoting now uh, we need to follow of course the the world wild health 
advices. We don't know yet if groups of 100 people can be together or not in the same, I mean, big meeting room, etc. But I think as a start, small mice groups can come because I think that uh, till 50 uh, persons, it is allowed that they can be in a meeting room respecting, uh, let's say, the one meter or one meter and a half uh, distances, etc. I think we will start from that step by step. And I think that above all, uh, people, it's not only specific, I guess, to Morocco, it is worldwide. Everybody is waiting to see what his neighbor will do. I mean, once now, I know that Europe will open in July, Spain, that it's our next country, neighbor country, France, Italy. I think once we will see people traveling to these countries, we will our own go to these countries, come back from our trip, see that we can live with it, that nothing can happen, that it is. So we will, we will get used to it. I mean, uh, earlier this week, this Monday, I went to one of the, the five-star hotels here in Casablanca to get lunch with one of the directors that it's a friend of mine. And of course, well, all this period we have been talking because the hotel uh, stayed open and he said, please come for a coffee, come for a lunch, come just... And I wanted to do that just to get this experience of being in a hotel during this period. It's true that it's not easy. I mean, somehow we feel like, you know, we, we are afraid a little bit. But uh, it's like I remember uh, the first time when I stayed home two or three weeks and then I had to go to the supermarket. So I put in a mask, I was very scared, etc. But then the second time, the three times, you do it as you did always. Of course, you, you are aware about what you are doing, but you do it with some, let's say, some natural gestures. Why? Because simply we are human beings and human beings and people have to get used to things they are doing. So if something is special or different, we have to get used to it. But I guess once we get used to it, then we do it with normal. And as I said, life will have to go on. We need to I mean, we need to go on on our life. I mean, we all need to eat, we need to work. Uh, people have to do things. Of course, all these conferences by uh, by medias and by like uh, Zoom with all these Google Meets, etc. It's nice, but I guess this will not change the contact with people because we are all humans. We like contact. We like to meet people, we like to discover, we like to see, and well, it will come back uh, step by step. Uh, it's not easy times, but we have to stay optimistic. Hopefully, all the bookings we had for this summer, they did not cancel yet. So all our partners, they cancel only Every week they cancel the week after. Of course, some groups have been cancelled because they think that they will not come. But I mean, the majority have been rescheduled. That means that people, they still believe they will come back. We will be there, inshallah, to welcome them. We will, of course, do all what is in our hands to keep them safe and let them discover the beauty of our country and being here and going to, to normal life. So this is my message. Stay optimistic. Everything will come back, inshallah, and we will get through through it anyways. In the words of Anthony Angelo, or he's a famous author, and he said, wherever you go, no matter what the weather is, 
always bring your own sunshine and city i think you and atlas voyages have your own sunshine this is why your clients haven't cancelled and they've postponed so that is a very very positive message to the industry this is bunny bula from the dope news uh, i invite you to stay tuned for more such exciting episodes from african voices on the road to growth Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay blessed. Bye.